Huh. Holy wow. My eyeballs are sweating. How's it going everyone for our entertainment and yours as well? Uh, this is Hot Nugs. It's kind of like that show with hot questions and even hotter wings, except we're rolling with dino nuggets, but we're not skimping out. We got the same hot sauces. We're ready to roll. I'm here with David. How you feeling, David? Feeling a little nervous. I'm not gonna lie. Um, uh, yeah, and how I know Ryan here is uh, we live in the mountains of Southern California and run a camp there. And uh, sometimes we just look for things to do, something creative. And uh, apparently today we're gonna burn. You wanna, you wanna start with number one? Start with number one. Let's do this. You ready? Yes. Okay. This one is a... Uh, it's buffalo sauce. Mm-hmm. This is pretty, uh... Pretty good. You grew up in a small town. And I'm curious, because I know that you made, uh, like, a really quick jump transition uh to a big new york city you know uh how old were you about 17 right 17 years old when i graduated high school you made a jump to a big city and then from there uh five years and then boom straight to la i'm curious what has drawn you to these places and now that you're back here in a small town in southern california i think it's I, I think I was ready to just jump right into the fire and move right to a big city. The good thing is I had a family member that lived there. My aunt lived in New York. So I moved in right with her and I grew up. I was so dazzled by the big lights in the big city and to go into Manhattan and see Broadway shows. And um, I think at that age, you're just ready for anything. It was a culture shock. I'm not going to lie. There was so much going on all at once, going from a small town to that. But, and then moving to LA, that was another culture shock. It's more spread out, all of that. But I, New York primed me for everything for the rest of my life, I think. And by the time that I came out to Wrightwood from LA, I lived in LA for 23 years. I had a culture shock coming to Wrightwood, California in the mountains, but, um, but I wouldn't change a thing. Yeah, you wanna dive into the, into the second wing? Yeah. Let's go the second way. Mm. That was really good. I super love eating on camera. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> as much as I can. <laughs> How's the heat doing for you? Not so bad. Yeah, Not right? so bad. Right? Yeah. In con. Wow, I really just psyched myself out for this. I, yeah. Uh, so far. We're 20% done. <laughs> Thank you. You know? <laughs> so I have a picture for you. Look at that. So sometimes I've known you to dress up as a food item. Yeah. In those photos, you dressed up as a banana and you were eating a banana. Yeah, I called it bananabolism. Banana, bananabolism. Yeah. Okay. And then you dressed up as a pickle. Yeah. And you ate a pickle. I did. I actually got a. Uh, it was pretty amazing. Went on Amazon to find my cost because I lost my banana. Mm -hmm. Um. Went on Amazon to find my costume, and what do you what do you know? Men's pickle shows up, and I had to commit to that. And uh, that's the name of the costume. Men's pickle. One size fits most. Shout out to Men's Pickle. I was a, I was just an average pickle with a really great personality. I think I'm putting you on the spot right now. Yeah. What's the next food item that you would like to get dressed up as? A meatball. A meatball. Yeah. Okay. Solid. It's a good choice. Because you know, it's it, it t it takes balls to commit. Yeah, it to, does. Uh, to a role like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I think uh, I think meatball. It's the way to go. And I don't think it's too far off for you to have a meatball while you're a meatball and 
Everyone loves a good meatball. You want to try the third? All right, round three. Mm-hmm. <laughs> round three. They're soggy, cold. How do you feel about that? It's pretty good. Um, that's pretty good. It's, um, I don't know if it's like my go-to sauce. I still, I think I, I'm a little bit of a sucker for a little bit of Cholula. You know, gotta go with the classes, a little Tapatio. I think both of those things are spicier than that. So next question for you. You spent a lot of time in Hollywood pursuing, you know, the, the whole acting life and all that good stuff. Is there a specific role that you are just so proud of and you just like, it lives in infamy in your mind. I think uh, if I had to choose one, I had so much fun um, playing. There was a short film that I did. It was called Wine Guys. And there was so much fun preparing for and doing this role because what I played was a mafioso boss. Right. And this is the farthest thing from me personally that I could ever try to pull off and the fact that people were telling me I pulled it off or that I felt like I was doing it and being the mafioso boss. And um, that was so much fun to do. I gotta say, I love that cunning look when he the guy starts talking for the first time and you're like, <laughs> you know, you just kinda like look at him like, no, yeah, not right now. Tough part is that I, I did method with with uh, the actor's name Maxwell uh, Maxwell Chase. I I did method with him the whole time that we were there. I was staring him down. <laughs> he wanted to have light, fun conversation, and I was just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would terrify me. Mm -hmm. uh, on to wing four. Wing four. On to nug four. Nug, we're, four. we're eating nuggies, nuggets, yeah, chicken nuggets, shaped like dinosaurs. We're having fun here. Yeah, some people say like nugs, not drugs. It's true. Yeah. yeah. What are you like for or against? I'm pro nugs, not good. drugs. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's do it. All right, I'm going here. This one's got a little bit more of a kick. A little bit more of a kick. We're, up, we're going up there. This one, I actually would want to put on things. Other things. It's good. It's smoking. You know, I uh, I know you as more of a dog person. Yeah. And uh, I know you've talked about this a lot. Growing up with a dog, always wanting a dog. And suddenly, out of nowhere, you flipped a script and you got a kitten which is very different than a dog. It's true. So can you tell me why you ended up deciding to go with a kitten and what differences are you experiencing for the very first time? The main reason I decided to go for a kitten is my... <coughs> <coughs> there it is. <coughs> main reason I decided to go for a kitten is because my boss was haggling me about not having a dog. <laughs> uh -huh. He said, no. Why? No. No. You can't have a dog. <laughs> Why would he say such I, a thing? You know what? I don't know. We should ask him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I did. I grew up with a dog. I grew up with an American bulldog with a really cool lineage. So I don't know if you've seen the films uh, Homeward Bound or Cheaper by the Dozen. The dogs in those films are the grandfather and great-grandfather of the dog that I grew up with. Really? Yeah, a uh, wonderful dog. His name was Pink Floyd. Uh, called him Floyd for short. But the transition to the kitten, bizarre. But I've never had a cat. I never really had been around cats. But um, I like the idea of having the companionship. You know, you start living on your own. You start kind of... You start kind of pacing around a little bit, trying to find, you know, something to do. And I, there's something about taking care of uh, of another, like, another being, you know, and they appreciate you and have that affection for you. And um, what sauce are we on right now? We are on five. Number five. Five. Let's do this. All right. The halfway mark. Yep. <laughs> Mm. 
Mmm. They just get better and better. And heat. There's good flavor in that one. It's gingery. That's what I expect a hot sauce to be like. Hmm. That level of heat. It's it's good. That's a certain level right there. There's a lot to unpack there. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> so, David, anybody who knows you mm. knows that you're a super fan of James T. Mm. I'm curious. What was it like to share that that kind of like that love affair um, with other people who also are super fans of James Dean when you went and did your documentary on the fans of James Dean. How was that for you? That was such a great experience. When I found out that there was a festival in his honor every year in his hometown, I was like, I want to go. I want to go and, um, and meet other people and all of that stuff. I felt like I needed an extra reason to go to justify flying to Indiana to Fairmount and um, go and figure all this out. So I ended up deciding I was going to do a doc documentary. Never done one before, but that was, that was, took a bit of bravery to hire crew that were in the town that I never met and meeting everyone, all the other, what we call them, our deaners, you know, um, that I had never met. And then to uh, to shoot a documentary with them, set up interviews and all of that stuff. But in the end, I made friends with these people and they're part of my world, I'm part of their world. And that's so awesome to have that James Dean as the reason why we came together. And um, yeah, so we keep in touch and once in a rare while I'll go back to Fairmount and some actually live in LA and I'll go and hang out with them on. Wow, brilliant. That's very, that's very cool. Number six. Number six? Let's do it. <sighs> For the other side of the Mississippi River. The other side of the Mississippi River. Here it goes. <clears throat> Vinegar. <laughs> it is vinegary. Whiskey smoked ghost. That's what this is. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <sighs> it's hot. Mm hmm. I'm going to become a ghost, as it turns oh, out. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. I'm smoked ghost sitting here right now. Um, so, you volunteered with um, going out with groups of people to serve in a soup kitchen in Brooklyn, New York, or to build homes in Houston, Texas, or to feed the homeless at Skid Row. And so you are generous. You're giving your most valuable gift, your time. But what's something that you gained from all of this? Something you learned? I grew up, I grew up going to church. Um, so a lot of these trips were church associated trips and we would, uh, we go and we do stuff like that. The crazy thing is like, you're working in a, in a soup kitchen in the middle of Brooklyn and you're asking this guy who says he pays $20,000 a month to keep this going and nobody's paying him. It's all like, how do you do it? And this guy just goes, honestly, when you're doing the right thing, business is good. <laughs> so many surreal moments, restoring houses, in Houston after Hurricane Harvey was, uh, it was such a fascinating thing um, to just kind of see like, you know, just people being struck down by a natural disaster. And they're living in a trailer in the front of their home, the front of their actual home, you know, in the driveway. It's just hard to really kind of think about I don't know. I, I, I've met some very real people living in hard times. Yeah. I think that's fascinating to, I think that everybody should actually witness or understand people's hardships and where they, what everyone is going through out there in the world. And that's a good thing that you've had that eye opener throughout your life. Yeah. At a, being as young as I was, you know, 
just through high school. Yeah, it was it was different. It was surreal. You know, huh? This next one, number seven. Here it goes. You're taking a lot of time to chew. Is, Is everything it? okay? Uh huh. You trying to taste it? You trying to feel it? Mm -hmm. you just, Not... you can't commit to it. Mm hmm. I yeah. Uh, mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh huh. No. Yeah. You sure? Mm hmm. Uh huh. Okay. I do. I do see the sweat. Do you? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I feel it. Yeah, you're 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 <laughs> shining up a little bit there. Yeah. I'm feeling alive right now. Yeah, yeah. So while your face is burning, yeah, I'm gonna ask you a question. Okay. Since you are one of the only people that I know personally who has traveled almost the entire United States. Mm. First off, what's the last? Uh, what's the last destination? What's the only place you haven't gone? That's my. That's one question. And then. Where's one place you can't wait to get back to? And what's one place that you will never find yourself again? Um, there are four destinations I have not been in the United States. Uh, I would, Alaska, Minnesota. Oh, okay. Kansas. Oh. These are all kind of spread out. Yeah, you're not gonna be able to hit these all at once. And North Dakota. North Dakota. Yeah. But South Dakota? South Dakota, I've been through. Black Hills, Badlands National Park. It's so beautiful. The most stars I've ever seen in the night sky. Those are the four places I've never been. Somewhere I'm excited to go back to would probably be New Orleans. Because I hadn't been there since before Hurricane Katrina. And I know there was a lot of improvements naturally made yeah. in the city since then. A place that I don't really need to see again. Oh gosh, I think in terms of driving, it would be Texas. Um, I remember I drove through the majority of it a couple of times and I actually started to believe that there wasn't another state out there, that this was the only state. It's only Texas, that's it. It's always Texas and Ohio isn't real. It's just Texas, and that's all I experienced. Lots of nothing. Let's go into... Da uh, Bomb? Da Bomb. Da Bomb? I've heard so many great things about this. I'll tell, I'm will going to tell you something. I was prepping these a little while ago. Um, you smell this one. Yeah. It gets all up in your business. Okay. I don't know about... Oh, I have a lot of business that I don't need to have this get up in but um i guess i'm ready for anything this is what i signed on for yeah 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 uh i'm actually gonna i'm gonna do something a little bit different okay okay i'm actually gonna take this really quick and i'm gonna i'm gonna add on to it just a little bit huh here we go because i just don't believe everybody when they say it's the worst one now Oh, uh, we can do better than that. Come on. Ugh. There it is. There it is. A little, a little, a little dabble. Oh, well, I can't, I can't take that. I mean, it's, it's an instant challenge. I don't, I'm not going to force you to do it. I know, I know, but I'm not going to not do it. Yeah. Yeah. Because we dab at eight. There's, yeah, dab at eight. So it's a thick one. Yep. I'm getting that. I'm. Getting that. Can you smell it? Oh my <laughs> yes. gosh, you went for it. Okay. <laughs> this is Da Bomb. Da Bomb Diggity. Oh. You ready? I'm ready. Cheers. Cheers. Let's do this. Hmm. Hmm. Tastes like fuel. Mm -hmm. Like rocket fuel. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You ever had rocket fuel before? Not in the past few hours, I understand. Mm. And uh, I'm pretty excited. Uh, cameraman Andrew has been saying that I'm um, taking small bites. That was all one bite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All at once. Yeah. How do you feel? How do you feel? I feel... Do you, you still feel? Uh, I feel the other parts of my body. Maybe not my mouth anymore. Uh-huh. Yes. So. So. Yeah, man, so? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. So. Buttons. When it goes down, makes it extra special. Uh, so I have a question for you. You're a writer. I'm done. <clears throat> and uh, I wanted to ask you, what are you working on right now? What's something that you're working on in the right now and what's inspired you to start this project? Every- <sighs> I know. It's your speechless. How are you talking? A lot of thought. Sure. I just want to know what it's about. I'm writing about uh, but the lessons that I've learned from people in my lifetime. I've had the pleasure of meeting and growing up with and working with some pretty amazing people that have taught me some pretty amazing things and I think what I want to do is kind of put them on paper the lessons that I've learned and hopefully it'll spark something in somebody to do better (laughs) Uh uh-huh And I'm going to write about this moment and how they shouldn't be doing that. It's good. You gonna... It's good. Just trying to breathe. Breathing. Breathing is good. We got two more. We got number nine. Number nine. I have no more sinuses left. I have, uh, I have no more hope. (laughs) Um, Started off strong. But can I just say, Mm. for the record, Mm -hmm. nine wings in and we haven't touched any of this stuff. Um. Didn't see that. I was blinded by heat. Mm -hmm. All I could see was fire. Mm -hmm. Right now, that's all I see. They're melting. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I am. I don't know. I feel Uh, as though we've stepped into a different parallel. That everything is a different world. You know, I don't know why I'm doing this, but it may be circulating the heat to the rest of my body, so it's not just all in my mouth. So, I think it's safe to say Thanks. that you have one of the coolest jobs ever. I see. Um, I'm curious, what brought you to the camp life? What's, and what is the most memorable camp life moment that you've had? When I was a kid, 
Wow, school was rough. I didn't, I didn't really fit in as well in school. And uh, I remember my parents shipped me off to camp and it scared me. Whoa. Ah, excuse me. Flames. We can edit flames coming out of your mouth. I, th I was able to blossom and grow in the camp world. And I worked on being, I worked on social skills, interdependence, all of that great stuff. And um, I lived for camp every year. And over years of time, I grew through the camp system. I became a counselor in training and then a activity instructor. And then I became program director and then camp director. And now I'm a camp manager for site, for sites in the mountains. And um, um, the reason why I still stay in the camp is to be able to give back what I got to the people that come into this little world. I try to create a utopia for people to come into, to be emotionally safe and to have a good time in the mountains. This place can be whatever it is that you want it to be. And that's why I still stay in the camp world. That's a wonderful reason. I have to admit, I don't necessarily feel safe right now. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry. Yeah. I think this was a, but this is a pact to do this together. Yeah. And I think that, uh, I think that we have our final one. Yep. And uh, looks like you're getting ready to do the, the dab. The last dab. The last dab. And oh man, Sean Evans, you legend please don't copyright us <laughs> this of course is inspired by hot ones i that's a lot i did a, i did like one two three four dabs oh i dabbed it up dabbing it up here we go here we go dabalicious uh, yeah yeah you're definitely safer than i am uh, still a dab nonetheless still a dab cheers <laughs> made it through so far. It's going to go in my mouth, so we know it's going to finish. It's like I'm... Um you ever uh, had uh, wasabi? Mm-hmm. One time I had wasabi, dipped it with a chip because I thought it was guacamole. That was a wake-up call. <laughs> I, uh, I am breathing fire. I... <sighs> And my ears are also mm. radiating. I have a question for you. At this heat, jump. If given the opportunity to go on a trip to Europe or to a world of concrete <laughs> convention, which would you choose and why? Fucking world of concrete. Eh. Yeah. What lights you up about that? Uh. They have, um. Tools. In concrete. It goes hard. It goes hard. Tools, concrete, and blades. Uh huh. Saw blades and. Wow. <clears throat> huh. Holy wow. I am. My eyeballs are sweating. Okay. Oh, I need you just cry. Yes. Yeah. Uh. It's hot. 
it's done. It's done? I feel it. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, here. Grab yourself a sauce. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Wow. I'm throwing that away. Wow. Uh, shit. <sighs> but we did it. We did it. It's done. It's over. <laughs> we made it. We're alive. Still. Well, we'll see what happens. <laughs> All right. Ryan. This camera, this camera, we're going to roll out the red carpet. What you got coming up next? I got a nap coming up pretty soon here. Um, yeah. And then, uh, uh, <sighs> this episode, as it turns out, is coming out at some point where I hope it's something we get look back on and laugh <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing now I'm crying <laughs> it's gonna be funnier later <laughs> people like this yeah when people everything we do we do for you what about you David Gary yeah that camera and then the camera that's pointing at you that's pointing at me no. yeah this one? Not this one. That was my camera. Okay. Uh, this one. Okay. This one. Uh, I got a. I got a soft launch on an Instagram story soon. <laughs> I got a another day of training my cat Bucky to be in a harness so I can take him out for a little walk in the snow and. Uh, this episode to look forward to laughing and remembering how I felt. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>